Hello and welcome to the Wolf's Den. I'm Dave here with Mary Ellen and today we are going to be talking about the Baratheon brothers. Except this time we're going to be using a slightly different format. Some of the other podcasts that we've done it's typically been something that we've been talking about and it's like an ancillary topic related to a video we're making. So we kind of just talked about it beforehand and then decided to do the podcast. But the Baratheon brothers are a topic that we haven't really covered in a video and or really gone off on many in-depth conversations. But they're three that I find really interesting. There's lots of interesting text regarding the differences between the brothers. And I wanted to ask Dave a few questions that I came up with, and obviously I'll comment as we're going along and uh, see what he thinks. So he has no idea what these questions are, so this should be fun. All right, let's kick it off. What's the first question? All right. So, to begin with, uh, one of the first kind of descriptions of the three brothers that you get and that outlines the stark contrast between them comes from Don Elnoy in A Clash of Kings, John 1. Robert was the true steel. Stannis is pure iron, black and hard and strong. Yes, but brittle, the way iron gets. He'll break before he bends. And Renly, that one. He's copper, bright and shiny. Pretty to look at, but not worth all that much at the end of the day. So my question for you is, do you think Don Elnoy's assessment of the brothers is accurate, and why? I would say that Robert being the true steel, especially when he was younger, before... He was married to Cersei, and Cersei basically had him trying to drink himself into an early grave. But the Robert Baratheon that Don Elnoy knew when he was still at Storm's End, that's definitely an apt description. That's the Robert that Ned knew when he was growing up. The true steel. He was the whole package. Stannis, I think, might have a little more flex to him than the brittle iron that he's described as. I think the face that Stannis shows the world is the brittle iron that will definitely break before it bends. But I think he does bend a little bit here and there when he has to. Mm-hmm. His assessment of Renly is perfect. Mm-hmm. Renly is, look at me, look at me, I'm a king. Ugh. Look at me, look at me, I'm a knight. Which is what Maester Cresson, when he recalls the, ch- uh, the boys as children, he said that Renly was always, look at me, look at me, and now he's saying, look at me, look at me, I'm a king. But he's not a king, and doing what he did was only going to cause a problem. Right. He allowed his lover and best friend to talk him into doing something stupid. Okay. So and I have a question about that in a few minutes, but yes. So you think that that was a pretty apt description of the three? Especially when considering, and I guess I could say the same thing probably about Stannis' description, as I said about Robert's, is the Stannis that he knew from his time at Storm's End. Stannis has had a little growth, maybe, Mm -hmm. uh, since then, but the Stannis that he knew, that was a perfect description of him. Yep. He probably developed a little bit of this flex, almost as we've been watching him go through the story. Yes. So, um, this isn't one of my questions, but just out of curiosity, which one is your favorite? That's a really tough question. I love Stannis. I really like Robert. I find Robert to be incredibly tragic. Mm -hmm. The Robert that I wish we got to see in the story would probably be my favorite. Yep. But unfortunately, by the time we get to see him, he's been married to Cersei for 14 years, and he couldn't possibly be more miserable. He's a broken man. Completely. I mean, he literally tells Ned that he's hoping to drink and whore himself into an early grave. Um, he is miserable. It's one of the few things that I liked the sh- that the show did, is that conversation that they had between Cersei and Robert that doesn't exist in the books because there's no POV to give it to us where he tells us 
that he lost the only thing he ever wanted in Seven Kingdoms couldn't fill the hole that was left behind. Mm -hmm. He is incredibly tragic, and I think he's demonized by a lot of people because it's easy to say, oh, he's a drunk womanizing son of a bitch. Right. And it's so easy to make that claim. It just requires you to not think about him at all and just take the... Like the portrait that's he's painted as, without looking beyond the surface at all. And he was those things, but what people don't take into account is how he became that person. Exactly, and then they point to like what Liana said. Oh, he'll never stick to one bed. How do you know? You were the only thing he ever wanted. He fell in love with you the time he, the moment he saw you. If all of us were judged on how we acted when we were single teenagers mm -hmm. and into our early 20s when we were single, then no one would ever believe that anyone would stick to a single bed because pretty much any relatively attractive guy that has something going for him is going to be labeled as, he'll never stick to one bed because he didn't have to stick to one bed. He had the option to have some fun. Right. He was a single, really good-looking lord. It wasn't probably hard for him to find girls that would fill his bed when he was a single, not-spoken-for lord. It does not, however, mean that he would have continued acting that way if he got married to someone that he could tolerate. Yes, no, that's an unfair assessment. That was an unfair assessment on her part, and the people's leap to judgment between that statement and what he became is not fair. No, I think that Ned might have been... It was almost self-fulfilling. <laughs> right? But... I was like, Ned might have been a drunk if he was married to Cersei. Right. I couldn't imagine being married to someone that would make you more miserable than that woman. No. She's even nasty to Jamie. But we digress a little. Yes. So who would you, who's your favorite? Robert in his youth. Robert in his, his prime. youth in his prime would be my favorite. Okay. He would be awesome to hang out with. Minus Stannis. Without a doubt. But if we're going to pick from current characters, I love Stannis. <clears throat> he's so serious, and every once in a while, he's actually funny. Yes. Uh, I just respect who he is and that he owns who he is, and he's very disciplined, and he's got a lot of self-control, and he just does not play. No, he just keeps going. I love him. Okay. Speaking of Stannis, Stannis feels Robert granting Storm's End to Renly was a slight. Do you think it was? I think the fact that he never rectified it after his reign was secured is a problem. I think that once he had Joffrey, Joffrey should have become the Prince of Dragonstone since that's the technically technically the reason that he made Stannis a he wanted Stannis to hold it because his grip on the realm was weak at the time and he wanted a strong heir Stannis is definitely a strong heir holding Dragonstone I think he should have fixed that after a while though it should have become Stannis is the lord of Storm's End Sometime in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. Once Joffrey was born, especially once Tommen was born, mm -hmm. in the line of succession, at least in Robert's mind, he thought they were his, was secure. He should have rectified that and given Storm's End to his younger brother, who Storm's End was his by right. Absolutely. It was not right that he didn't do that. So I do think that Stannis was right to feel it was a slight... Maybe not at the time, like you said, but over time. And he had continued serving his brother very faithfully and ably. And he kind of felt like he gave and gave and never got. He never, Robert never acknowledged anything, really, that Stannis did. And, which brings me to my next point, not all younger brothers are as dutiful as Stannis, as we see with Renly. Stannis views his, uh, Renly's proclamation as king as extremely disrespectful. Uh, and more than a slight. Do you agree with him? I don't think it's a slight. I just think that it's... 
he's out of his damn mind. What are you doing? I understand that you think that you have the reach behind you and you're going to take the throne by force. But he had to have somewhere inside of him known there is a 0% chance that his older brother, Stannis, is ever going to accept that. Which means, no matter what happens, at some point, you're going to have to give the throne to Stannis or kill him. And Renly <clears throat> was too busy doing, look at me, look at me, I'm a king, to even think about the fact that there is a 0% chance that Stannis will stand for that. Which means he was willing, in my mind, to kill him. If need be. Or he just never thought it through. I See, I dislike Renly a great deal. And I dislike Renly a great deal for the simple, for what he did. Uh, and then the way he treated Stannis at the parley. I, I, I find him to be disgusting. He really shouldn't have. He was trying to provoke him. And they were both trying to provoke each other there. I don't necessarily dislike him more for doing that because that's what they were there to do. They should have never been there. And that's what I was saying. Robert never gave Stannis any of his due for being a great younger brother because guess what? There's shitty younger brothers, a.k.a. Renly. I mean, <laughs> Stannis held Storm's End for close to a year then under broke, siege. Then broke the Ironborn. And then did this, and he just kept doing. And then doing. he defeated the Iron Fleet at sea. He uh. had accomplished everything that you could ever ask your younger brother to accomplish for you. He took Dragonstone. Now, yes, Stannis didn't know how to build ships. It took him forever. He didn't know what he was doing. Right. It took him over a year, to close to two years, to build enough ships to attack Dragonstone. But I don't even think that's his fault. Stannis doesn't know how to... He's not a shipwright. He doesn't build ships for a living. He hired some people to build ships. And he wanted them big and badass. And it took forever. Building ships is not fast. It's not like... Maybe he should have contracted out to Bravos, and he could have had a fleet in a month. But no, it's not like someone suggested that to him and he didn't do it. Yeah, nor did Robert open the coffers of the Iron Throne to him to say, use this. It doesn't seem likely. Well, Other he was building the royal fleet, so you would imagine that Stannis wasn't paying for it out of his own pocket. But That's what I was... Well, yes, but if you're going to use the coin, then it's Robert or John Aaron, that freak. Uh, it's their responsibility. responsibility to say, here's X percentage more. You can hire blank. It seems like someone other than, like, 19 or 20-year-old Stannis, or however old he was, I guess he might have been 21 by then, he has no experience whatsoever in doing anything like that, and he was put in charge of building a fleet. And Stannis is a meticulous guy. I would imagine that it took that long because Stannis wanted every ship to be perfect. Yeah, so... And they needed wood. They needed to hire enough guys... He had no expertise in the task that he was given. So it took a long time. And then Robert never forgave him for it. But... Barring Stannis being a very rigid guy and being kind of the iron, do you think that most people would find what Renly did egregious? Yes. Yeah. I would imagine that, especially in a medieval world such as this, There'd be no tolerance for it. That would be a situation where the older brother is going to kill you. Uh, every time. Mm -hmm. There's a there's no chance that an older brother is just going to accept that. No. I mean, there there's the one example that's kind of like that where Sam was forced to abdicate. That's different, though. But that's not the same. There, there's a father involved that's forcing this on him. Without a dad there, that's a fierce mother effer. And without the older brother being the most inept person ever, which Sam is. Yes. There's no way that Renly could have possibly thought 
that Stannis would ever accept it. He thought that having the overwhelming military power would force Stannis to accept it. But don't you know your own brother? You guys have served on the small council together for years and years and years. You think you're going to intimidate him with your force? Stannis is not intimidated. No, no. If that's a word. Yeah, no. He doesn't back down. We're talking about Stannis Baratheon here. He will fight to the bitter end and then some. Correct. So he either, it never occurred to him, which is no. completely <laughs> stupid. <laughs> He's or, not stupid. Or he thought, you know, because Renly isn't stupid. That's why he knew what this would be. He, yeah, I guess he must have thought that eventually Stannis would either be forced to accept it because Stannis is the Lord of Dragonstone and he can only muster like 2,000 people. Which goes back to the initial slight and, you know what I mean? Like, it's just all, it's just like Stannis gets shit on a lot. No, it had Robert done the right thing initially. Right. That war's over. There, yeah, exactly. The Lannisters have no chance. Stannis is going to bring Storm's End, the power of the Stormlands. Renly's nothing. Renly is nothing. Renly would therefore maybe be able to bring the Reach onto their side. Oh, yeah. And when that army gets there, with, that's an undivided army, unlike it was when it got there. There's no trick to be played with Renly's armor or anything. I mean, Stannis is going to take King's Landing. Yeah. And there's not a darn thing that anyone could do to stop him. Even if Tywin snuck up on him from behind, there's no Reach army with him. Stannis would have obliterated him. Which is what should have happened, but alas, we wouldn't have the story. (laughs) That's true. So, um, speaking of kingship and uh, heirs, controlling for all other variables, meaning... They had a good small council, they had a good hand, they had a decent queen, they had blah, blah, blah. Who do you think would be the best king? Of the three? Mm Mm-hmm. If they were in an ideal situation, like a Jahara situation. My answer's going to surprise you. Okay. Renly. Okay. Because he has the most astute political mind. He understands the players better, and he is willing to play the game a little bit. Mm Mm-hmm. Stannis would be a good king, but I think that Renly would be a very good king. He is genuinely liked by just about everyone. Mm Mm-hmm. He has good intentions. What Renly should have done was be his brother's hand. Mm Mm-hmm. Which would have been... They would have been a very good ruling king and hand. Agreed. And he shouldn't have done what he did because that would have been a very good situation. The first thing that would have happened would have been incredibly beneficial to the realm. Littlefinger's head would be decorating a wall. Right. Varys' head might have ended up on a wall. Stannis is not going to play games with those jerks. No. Uh, He knows what they are. He recognizes what they are, and he has no patience for it. The very first act that Stannis would have had as king would be to kill Littlefinger. Varys, maybe. Varys is really useful. Yes, I don't think he would have killed Varys. He probably wouldn't have killed Varys because Varys could prove himself to be very useful. And Varys hasn't done... He hasn't committed crimes against anyone, per se. He's sly and whatnot, but he's not, he's not, you know, siphoning money from the crown or doing a bunch of the other things that... I guess I should revise. The first thing that he would have done would put Cersei's head on a spike. Well, yes, that's a given. See, I think with a guy like Davos's hand or Renly, Stannis would be the best king. I think that Davos would be better served to be his master of ships. Oh, true. But if you have, like, a guy like Davos, Davos grounds Stannis... And he chose him because of that reason. When he starts to maybe consider something that is extreme and or kind of too far one way, he'll consult Davos. I think that if Stannis was the king and Renly was the hand 
and Davos was there between the two of them. Because what's important for a king is to have people there who are not scared to tell you what they really think. Yes. And you don't have to be scared to tell Stannis what you really think. No. He wants you to tell him the truth. He hates this lickspittle shit. Exactly. And Renly would not hesitate to tell him what he really thinks. Yep. He's his brother. And Davos doesn't know how to not tell you what he thinks. The rest of the small council could be whatever it was, but with those three there, that would be a very, very good situation for the realm to be in. Yes. Because who's going to rise up when you know you have to fight Stannis? Stannis will put your rebellion down without any mercy whatsoever. Yeah, I think I'd go Stannis. I think, yes, Renly might be a little bit more charismatic, but Aegon the Conqueror wasn't the most charismatic man in the world. Yes, he, he he was serious. I think Stannis... I think it's pretty close, but my caveat for Stannis would have to be that he would need Davos and Renly to help him. But that's why I was saying having a very strong council, controlling for all variables. It's close. I think Stannis would be a very good king. I don't want people to get the impression that I don't. No, and I I think that um, George might agree with you because there's several annotations that state Renly would probably be the best. So I think in George's opinion, he agrees, but I just, it's a close call and I would go Stannis. Like if I had to vote, (laughs) <laughs> I'd vote Stannis. <laughs> I would pick Renly by a very small margin. Yeah. There you go. And it is, it's a close call. All right. <clears throat> so we've got Donald Noy's assessment, and we've got Varys calling uh, Stannis and Renly the Iron Gauntlet and the Silk Glove. So now I'm going to give you a little challenge. Describe each of the brothers in... One word or a few words using some sort of, like, metaphor like that. That's not easy to do. (laughs) Um, All right, so which one's first? Doesn't matter. All right, we'll go Renly to Stannis. The politician and the soldier. Okay. Okay. Those are roles, though. You know how they were kind of metaphorically, one was iron, one was copper, one's the iron gauntlet, one's the silk glove. Something more abstract. All right. Same order. The smooth talker? Nope, that's not it. <laughs> more like an item. This is a mind bender. I'll try to think of one, too. Okay. Renly, the white flag, and Stannis, the sword. Okay. Explain. And I'll explain. Okay. Renly, it suits their strengths. Renly's strength is his ability to talk. Okay. It's what you do under a white flag. You talk, you make compromises, you... Negotiate. Stannis is the sword. Because that is actually how he get, would get most things done. Either with the sword or with the other person's direct knowledge that if they don't listen to what he has to say, he's going to use his sword. He's more than just a sword, but that was the best I could come up with. Okay. So this this brings us back to kind of the way that George is constantly showcasing the opposites that exist in our world and, and in his world, especially when you consider that with Renly and Stannis. And he likes to use uh, metaphors to illustrate the differences between whatever characters he's trying to show you and to show the differences between... And he does that a lot with, with these two. I would say that if Stannis was an iron gate or something like that, like a... Why would it be a gate? Something that you can walk through? Well, are they gloves? 
No. Are they got is Stannis a gauntlet? No, I was trying to think of like um well, gaunt, different things that a gauntlet you, is a piece of armor. Right. And a silk glove is Yeah, something for, you wear. So like, this is a, what I'm saying. A fancy so ball a door. How something. can you block a doorway? You can put a curtain or you can put a door. This is the more metaphorical thing I'm talking about. That was a piece of clothing. And he made them he made them both a piece of clothing. They're not literally coins either. Or pieces of metal. Right. So let uh let's furniture. There's like hard stools and then there's See, it's not as George is really smart. It's not easy to do this. And then there's like a soft bean bag or something. Like do you know do you know what I'm trying to say? So you're saying the iron gate or the silk curtain? Yes. That's what I was trying to say. That was the one example I could think of. There's but two ways to block the doorway. You can put an iron gate on it or you can put a silk curtain on it. Yes. Stannis is the iron gate. It's not very easy to do what George does and make it smooth. <laughs> well, he doesn't have to think about it when he's live in front of a microphone. Yeah. And, yeah. And, uh... He can take as long as he wants. Right, and think of the, the metaphors for them. But, yeah, I just thought that would be, like, a fun thing to... Yeah, I like that. The Iron Gate or the Silk Curtain. Yeah. Or the Satin Curtain or... Something like that. What are, the, like, the Samite Curtain? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because he's, he's a little bit more fancy. Right. He likes his fancy clothes. Like Littlefinger says, he spends more money on his wardrobe than most of the ladies in the court. Right. Like, or like hard, brittle concrete versus grass or something. You know, he does that. Like, he, he makes it... To really drive home his point without continuously saying they were opposites. They're totally different. One's night, the other's day. You know what I mean? I do. So anyway, that was fun. And one last question, and this makes me a little sad. When Stannis reflects on his decision to kill Renly, he realizes that he loved his brother. And he felt bad about it. And he says he'll go to his grave thinking of that peach and of his brother. Do you think that the affection was mutual? No. And that's what makes me pissed. I don't think Renly likes Stannis at all. And he didn't love him as a brother, even. Because you can not like a sibling and still love them. If he loved his brother, or liked his brother, he wouldn't have done what he did. Do you think Robert loves Stannis? No. And that's why Maester Crescent thinks nobody ever loved him. And it's true. And it's sad. Well, Robert might have loved him. He didn't like him. Because you know what? Their parents died when they were kids. They were all each other had. And I don't know. Stannis don't... is boring. Robert liked to have fun. Robert liked to laugh. Robert's or Ned's boring too. That's why Stannis could never understand why he had so much affection for Eddard Stark and none for him. I think the fact that he was fostered with Ned probably yeah. proved to be the deciding factor. If he wasn't fostered, he would have grown up having that type of relationship with Stannis. But he didn't. The story would also be very different. Robert would not have been betrothed to Lyanna. None of that would have happened. But I don't think that either one of them really cared. But that speaks to Stannis. He loved his brother still. He thinks it. Well, he says the boy he was, not the man he grew to be. He remembers them when they were younger. Well, yeah, because the man he grew to be was cocky and... Was an overreaching son of a bitch. Yeah. I don't like Renly very much. As you can tell. <laughs> In case that wasn't clear. Yeah, I'll uh, say it again. But I think Stannis is the most interesting brother. For sure. Because he's the most complex one of the brothers. Robert and Renly are very similar. Yep. In almost every fashion, from the fact that Renly's a clone. Yep. They actually have similar personalities, except Renly lacks the scars. The emotional scars. Yeah. 
Renly was a kid during the war. So he basically spent almost all of his formative years as the younger brother of the king. Exactly. Not to mention you're the youngest, period, so he's got all of those attributes of the youngest. Sort of, but he also is the one that probably, if you asked them to tell you, asked him to tell you what their parents look like, he wouldn't remember. No, he wouldn't, but just being the youngest, it does something. It doesn't matter if your parents are gone. You're the youngest, you're the baby, you're the last one, you know? You have two older brothers that are looking out for you. That's true. There's a greater feeling of security when you're the youngest. Which tends to make the youngest a little bit more risk-taking. Because they they've got that protection, typically, from older siblings. Whereas Robert was the protection, and Stannis was the protection. Right. Renly was stuck inside Storm's End during that siege as well. But he wasn't in charge. Stannis was the one who held that line, if you will. Yep. So he never really had any real responsibility either. No. At what, what is his function on the small council? Um, He's the master of what? Nothing? I don't think it's ever even revealed. I don't think so. He's just on the small council and he's the master of something. But, and what was Stannis the master of? Law? No, uh, Renly's the master of laws. And what was Stannis? One second. Ships, formerly. Master of ships? Yeah. Which I guess makes sense. He was the master of ships and he led the royal fleet. He was the admiral, if you will, of the royal fleet when he defeated Victarion and the Iron Fleet at sea in, yep. Euron, in Euron. Which is such an incredible accomplishment that no one really thinks about very often. Stannis isn't a naval guy. He just came up with a plan and executed it. Knowing almost nothing about naval battles and naval tactics, he just came up with a plan and he defeated the Iron Fleet at sea. I don't even recall... Another example from history where the Iron Fleet was defeated at sea. Uh, the Iron Well, Bond yeah, because that one guy in times. Fire and Blood, but it was a surrender, basically. Yeah, they didn't fight a naval battle and defeat them. No, when he got there, the lady had killed their leader. Yeah, so they were basically like, his, yeah. his salt wife had killed... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, whatever Valerion. Yeah. Alan Valerion, maybe? Adam Valerion? One of those two. Not the Sea Snake. Was it? No, that was Corliss. That's Corliss. He it's was either the, Alan or Adam. He was the something snake, right? His son. Whatever, it doesn't what, matter. Whatever his nickname was, it doesn't matter. He's the one, the same guy who found Viserys. And like, here's another story about Stannis. Stannis found a Gerfalcon. And it was injured. And he nursed it. To health but it couldn't fly. And then he kept getting frustrated because Robert had one that was very... It wasn't a good hunter. I think it might have been able to fly, but... It... Oh, okay. I As a could... lad, Stannis found an injured goshawk and nursed it back to health. He named the bird Proudwing, but his brother Robert called it Weakwing, as it would never fly higher than the treetops and never soared. Robert himself owned a falcon named Thunderclap, who never missed a strike. Eventually, Stannis' great-uncle, Harbert, convinced him to abandon the bird, stating that Stannis was making a fool of himself with it. But that's... Innately, Stannis is actually soft. Inside. He is. He's got more of a... Uh... Well, you can kind of see it in his relationship with his daughter. Yeah where he has a far better relationship with his daughter than his wife does, and his wife's always around the daughter. Yeah. And they really did showcase that nice in the show. I mean, forget about what he did to her, but, like, when they were showing you their relationship. 
But regardless. But he's very ma- he was very mature beyond his years, even as a boy, but introverted. And a lot of times, people that are introverted, people take as rude or, or something. But in actuality, I think he's probably the best hearted in terms of like having some deeper affection for his family and for people. As shocking as that is. I think that would be a, a, a close competition with Robert. Oh, Robert has a good heart, too, for sure. But uh, Stannis is a little more sentimental. Maybe that's the better word. Shockingly. I, I know that's strange. It is true, if you really think about it. You don't ever get... Now, granted, Robert's the king, and we don't get that much access to him. Not nearly the same amount of access that we get to Stannis. But Stannis is the one that tells you the stories about when they were kids. Like the story of when their dad brought them to court for the first time. And he and Robert were, couldn't shut up the whole ride home about Mm -hmm. how awesome the king was. And then years later, their dad goes, that wasn't the king. You guys were just so excited. Yeah. That I didn't want to rain on your parade. Yeah. And I think about... I think Robert was a good man, but I do think one of the things he did wrong as king was not show Stannis some sort of... being proud of him, being grateful. He gave him nothing. And the guy just kept serving him. Well, I think Stannis always seemed so tough. That's the issue with the Middleborns, too. He always seems, he seems so like he tough doesn't need anything. That he didn't think about ever it. It think wasn't about malicious, it. I know that. I don't think it was malicious. No, it wasn't. Robert's think, not like that. I think that he was named the Lord of Dragonstone. And why isn't he the Prince of Dragonstone? This is something that's been driving me nuts forever. And since we're doing our podcast about it, and we'll probably never do a video on it. Why weren't Renly and Stannis called Prince Renly and Prince Stannis? If your brother is the king, you are a prince. You are not a lord. You are the prince of Dragonstone. You are the lo- the or prince at the very of least, Stannis, Storm's End. Whatever. No, they're both princes no matter what. All right, if your I don't brother know. is the king, you are a prince. You are not a lord. You're a prince. I don't know. No Maybe one that calls just... them princes ever. No, I am actually glad that they didn't. <laughs> I don't like it. Maybe George just... Bran didn't. was a prince. His brother Rob, when he became king, Bran was a prince. So when Robert became king, I mean, a king, year or two brothers, into his reign, they had Joffrey. It doesn't matter. Your brothers are still princes. Oh, all right. I don't know. Like every other king in history who had a brother... His brother was called Prince whatever. Right. Louis the Fourteenth had a brother named Philippe. His brother was Prince Philippe. He was Louis, King Louis. If you're the king's brother, you're a prince. Right. I don't know. <laughs> not something you'd have to ask George. I, not something that I could discuss and figure out with you right well, now. Well, if any of you have a clue why that's the case, please let us know. And did you have anything else you want to talk about today? No, I just wanted to talk about the the boys and see what your thoughts were and if you guys have any opinions and or thoughts please let us know and i hope to one day um get around to making a stannis series because i would like that stannis is the man oh and i had one last question this and then we're ending because um we have to get ready for our live stream describe each of the brothers in one word just one word all three. Robert, tragic. Stannis, misunderstood. Renly, weak minded. Yep. I like the misunderstood, tragic. And for Renly, selfish. I can't argue with that. <laughs> But anyways, it's time to wrap this up. 
So before you leave, make sure you like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, do all that good stuff, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening, everyone.